how could we shape a high tunnel for colder northern climates so that it works with the sun to maximize our growing season? Other than the temperature, our hours of daylight are the biggest limitation to our growing season in the north. Let's look at what the growing season could be if temperature wasn't the issue and only daylight was our limiting factor. Typically, 10 hours of daylight are often cited as the minimum day length for many types of crops. So if we use that as a starting point, on February 4th is when our day length reaches the threshold and it continues up until November 6th when we again fall below 10 hours. The season below 10 hours is sometimes called the Persephone period. So what if we could be growing crops that whole time? We would have nearly three times the normal length of growing season in South Dakota. Could this be a really lofty goal to achieve? Well, let's start by discussing one of the most successful agricultural innovations of the 20th century in China, the Chinese solar greenhouse. China has the highest greenhouse-based vegetable production in the world. By 2010, China had over 1.9 million acres under cover in solar greenhouses. To really grasp the scale of this, let's take a quick trip to Shenyang in northern China, just on the outskirts of town. We can see a lot of buildings here. What are these buildings? All solar greenhouses enabling local food production for the folks living nearby. What makes these systems effective? The south facing wall and roof is covered with the typical polyethylene films that we're used to for high tunnels. The north roof, which receives minimal sunlight, is opaque, allowing for good insulation. The remaining north wall is built of some heavy thermal mass, sometimes packed earth or concrete blocks. Then it's equipped with a retractable thermal blanket to cover the film at night. All of this is providing a system that works passively with only the sun's energy. The solar greenhouse is widespread in China at latitudes between 43 and 32 degrees north. When we slide that over to the United States, it still sets a little south of us. Let's compare the weather between Shenyang and Brookings, South Dakota to see how different it is. Our average temperature in January is similar, 13 and 20 degrees in Shenyang versus 13 and 17 in Brookings. Our average daily highs are pretty close, 22 in January and 28 in February for Shenyang, and 24 and 28 in Brookings. However, if we look at the lowest recorded temperatures, negative 19 and negative 14, our lowest recorded temperatures are much lower. And this is because of our distance from the coast, so we have a lot more volatility in our low temperatures. But I think there is some hope that this could do some pretty big improvements over the traditional high tunnel. As we look at optimizing the structure of the high tunnel or greenhouse, the fact that all transparent materials have poor insulation properties drives our design constraints. We need to balance two competing things, maximizing sunlight while minimizing heat loss. Let's look at our traditional high tunnel structure. In the summer, our noon sun angle is slightly from the north, but in the winter, the sun is low in the southern horizon. This sets us up for an asymmetrical structure. During all seasons, we want our growing area to be fully illuminated by direct light. We can then utilize an opaque insulated surface on the north roof and wall to minimize the heat losses. Now, going a step further, what if we could also add temporary thermal mass that meets the non-permanent definition of a high tunnel to help absorb daytime heat for use at night in the cooler months? Make sure we get as much direct sunlight onto the blocks as possible in the winter time, but shade those blocks in the summertime to help keep the system cooler. Those 2D illustrations are nice, but let's look at how this works in three-dimensional space. In the winter, we can get full illumination under that north roof onto the thermal mass blocks. Here we have a map of the average solar radiation onto the surfaces in December. 
we get very nice coverage across the entirety of the thermal mass wall. Now, let's look at June. Look at how the entire ground surface gets direct light, but the blocks do not. What a great way to help avoid excess heat. Looking at our energy map for June, we see the sun is fully illuminating our growing space and not the heat storage system. On to the next step. Let's build it. This video was funded in part by USDA's South Dakota Specialty Crop Block Grant. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I'd also love to know your thoughts. Comment down below and let's chat. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more content like this.